Today, we're going to have a look at VMware's vCloud Usage Meters, new version 3.6. And we're going to have a run through some of the options that you'll see within this new product version. First, let's log in to the portal. Is the first thing to notice for anyone who's familiar with the previous versions of vCloud Usage Meter is we have a few more tabs under the Manage Options. So let's start with the first tab, the Provider tab. Now this is where a service provider actually gets inputs the information for their company, their names, their phone numbers. But also, importantly, they enter their partner ID, their contract number, and their site ID. And as a service provider, you typically get these from VMware, from your par partner accounts, where you would log in, access this information. This is important from a VMware's billing perspective because it allows VMware to understand who the reports are actually coming from, from a service provider. The second tab is a email tab. So if we go to his tab, this is where you enter the outgoing email server. This is how Usage Meter sends its automatic reports out. They're done via email. So what you need to do is enter in an SMTP server, a host name, and a port number. And you can also specify what security you want for that particular outgoing email server. So if we select SSL, we would then change our port number to that corresponding SSL connection. We can also enter in a username and password and then send a test email. Now, from that perspective, thinking about your outgoing email server, it's important to realize that the usage meter appliance needs access to an SMTP server, whether it's out on the internet or in your local data center, to be able to provide the automatic billing that usage meter 3.6 can send. We also have an option on the topic of connecting to email servers of entering a internet proxy, which we see here on the proxy tab. Now, if this is kind of standard internet access configuration options. We enter in an IP or a host name of a proxy server, give it a port number. Do we want to use SSL and do we want to use authentication? Now, the great thing about having access to a proxy server is you don't have to give the usage meter appliance access to the internet to go out to an SMTP server. So if you're a business that uses Office 365 or Google's email service, those SMTP servers are typically out in the public cloud somewhere. So by using a proxy server, you can safely configure outbound internet access through that proxy server to configure access to the outgoing email server. The next tab that we look at is email alerts. And this is typically where you can set up some basic monitoring. Has a collection run successfully or has it failed? And you simply specify a from email address and a to email address, and you can also send a test afterwards. This allows you to set up some email reporting that basically will just send you an alert on a successful collection or a failed collection of usage meter running its collection reports against the specified products. Now this takes us to the next tab, products. We'll click show inactive here, so we can see all the vCenter servers that we've entered, whether we've activated them or not. And we can see a number of vCenter servers that usage meter is actually monitoring for billing purposes. We can edit these connections and we simply can update the username and passwords. Do we want to meter them? Do we have a, a, an SRM manager in there? But importantly as well is we can enable external platform services control. Now in a large vSphere environment, vCenter appliances and vCenter deployment are typically split out from a services architecture perspective. So you would have your external platform services controller separate from your dedicated vCenter server. And if that's the case, you simply click on the tick box and enter in the host name of the platform services controller as well. 
We also have some more products that we can enter in here. So we've got vRealize Operations Manager, we have the NSX Manager, vCloud Director if you have one in your environment, vRealize Automation, and VMware Horizon DAS. So if we edit to Horizon DAS, we can see that we can specify how many VDI session models we're using, what the username and password is for that particular environment. And this gives access to all these product manager appliances, access from usage meter to be able to go and collect usage options from those particular services. So if you think as an example, NSX manager, for instance, by entering in the credentials here, we've basically said, here's the username and password. Usage meter can then go and log in to the NSX manager using this username and password on port 443 and collect usage information from NSX. Now, it's important to note that in this example, we're using this, uh, providing this demonstration from a lab environment. So we're using the admin and default passwords. In a typical production environment, this wouldn't be the case. You'd be creating service accounts for access to these. But in the interest of time and demonstrations, everything always works better in a lab environment. We're just using the, the, the default username and password. On the next tab, we have the ability to set our report. So what's our per VM memory cap that we want to set? And do we want to report NSX and vRealize operations as standalone products? Now, this is dependent upon what billing type you're providing as a service provider and how you're paying for your licenses back to the VMware Cloud Provider Program. Moving on to the Collections tab, we can specify when we want to run the collections. They run at every hour, and we can pretty much pick every minute of every hour that we want it to run from 0 to 59. So if we want it to run on the hour, exactly, we'd say 0. And if we want it to run 5 minutes past the hour, we'd specify that. Moving on to the APIs, you can actually add admin tokens and user tokens. So if you have a service provider that has a billing tool that you want to integrate with usage meter to collect the statistics from that, then you can simply use the API. So you can add an admin token and a user token. And then you would simply cut and paste these into your billing model, giving it the API and URL for this usage meter appliance. And then finally, we have the LDAP tab. This is where you would enter in an Active Directory host name, what port you want to use, and whether or not you want to use SSL. This is to integrate authentication for the usage meter appliance into your authentication service. And then very simple, simple standard, what you would expect from LDAP, you have a username, um, a dis distinguished name, and then a user base as well for the schema, the object class, etc. Just what typical things you would expect within your usage meter environment. From the manage option, we've got some more options along the top here. So let's first look at licenses. And as a service provider, this is where you specify what licenses you have and what billing categories you have. So we'll start with the license set. We, this is where we add our licenses in as they're discovered. So we can see here we've got some vSphere 6 and vSphere 5 Enterprise Plus licenses. They're assigned to our particular vCenters. And then when we go back to our billing categories, this is where we assign what they are. So if you have multiple vCenters, perhaps you have a management server that's running vSphere 5, you can specify that this license key isn't part of the cloud provider program. You can specify that it's a perpetual license. This is where essentially you're buying your licenses up front and you're paying for them before you use them. When you specify the vCloud Air network, which is now the VMware cloud provider program, you specify that you want to pay for the licenses as they're consumed. 
So if you think of the example of you deploy, deploy your public cloud infrastructure, what you don't pay any costs until you actually get virtual machines from your customers running on those. And this is where we define the different types that we have, and we can also specify demo as well. It's important when you're monitoring multiple environments and multiple license keys. The automatic reporting options. So as I mentioned, we've configured our SMTP server in, in our manage tab over here. And we're able to now submit reports to VMware. We can do it manually. So we can click the submit now button. and We'll get a nice little option up here that we've successfully sent to a particular email address. And we can also create reports to send to ourselves. So we'll call this David Hill test. What reporting day we want. We want cluster history, monthly usage. We'll just pick it all with the license sets and we're going to send it to dhill at vmware.com. So we'll say save. And we also need to enter in a valid email address from the from. So we'll click save. Okay. So we now have submit reports to ourselves as well. So now that we've configured the ability to also send our self report, we will move on and have a look at the monitor tab. Now this is where we can see what's going on. And we can see here by hovering over a particular time on a particular day that we've had some failures. Now, this is purposely configured to show you these failures so you can see what's happening. Otherwise, we'd have nothing but nice little OKs in these boxes over here. So if we hover over here, we can see that we realize automation. There's no license found. Um, one of the vCenter servers, we couldn't log in to an incorrect username or password. And the vRealize operations manager has a missing extension. And these just keep getting reported every time we do a collection. But it gives us information around what's going on with our usage meter. So if we have any problems, then we can also go back, say, look in January. We can see that there was actually no collections in this month. So we'll pick a date where we actually had this environment. And then we can look at different issues. We also have the ability to export these out to a TSV file. Now let's move on to the customers. And this is where you can enter in all the information about your customers, create rules and subset information to help you manage the billing for your customers. And we'll call this David Hill Incorporated. We'll pick out a country and we'll say we're in the United States and we'll enter in a postcode. So as I live in the US, we'll pick a Austin, Texas zip code. We click save and we now see that we have a customer called David Hill Incorporated. But at the moment, that just covers all every, a customer environment. Now, what we want to do is add some rules around this. So if you think if you've created some folders or you've created resource pools, you can actually assign a particular folder to a customer. So if we look down this list here, we'll see that we've got lots of resource pools. So let's just pick this resource pool. Just as an example, we'll pick it and we'll give, we see its resource pool and we'll give it a value and it's a unique ID. So we'll click create. And then if we look at the rules list, we'll see that David Hill Incorporated is part of that particular resource pool. We can also see by clicking the option show rules for all customers, the other rules that have been set up for different customers. So we have test customer, we've got an individual virtual machine assigned to that customer. So basically when everything's built and the reports are run, Everything within those rules is assigned to those individual customers, so it breaks it down. We also, 
can run through these rules and we can look at unmapped virtual machines, see what's available. So we can drill down and look at some very granular options within usage meter about the environments that we're working with. So it's really, really easy to pick the customers that we want to create and assign the rules to. So we can pick individual ones, look at what's available. If we go back to the customers environment, we'll see now that we have one rule assigned to David Hill Incorporated. And we can either edit or delete. So we'll delete that customer and we'll say yes. We also have the ability to import customers' data from a CSV file, which if you're a service provider with lots of customers that you want to import into these, you can create a simple CSV file with these headers and just pick that in particular file and import it. And then you can just import it in and it'll just automatically create those users to speed up the time. Now we're going to look at reports. This is the key information that's sent to VMware about the billing for your environment. So if we look here, we can pick different options. So we'll say, let's have a look at October and we'll click browse. So we see here, we've got the DAS bundle, we've got VDI edition, RDSH edition, we've got the vCloud SP advanced bundle. So all the different bundle sets that come from the VMware Cloud Provider, we can see what we're being reported to and what are getting billed. So we'll see that we've got 13 units here, we've got four here and 13 there. And if we go further down, it breaks this out into further information. So we can see that we have our license keys for our vCenters. We have SRM license keys, NSX Advanced, NSX Enterprise, and the number of VMs that are being managed by those. And we can go down further and we can start looking at any configuration issues for that particular month as well. We can export this as well. So if we wanted to export it, we can do it as tab separated, so as CSV files and export it as a zip file. We can also run different reports. So maybe we want to look at the customer's monthly usage. Remember, we just created some customers. We, we had two customers, so we see here that we've got a 10 and A running some of these uh, Horizon DAS as well, and it's showing you what should be reported. We can even make it anonymous for those customers, and if we browse it again, we will make sure that we don't see any of the customer information. Let's have a look at some different ones. We can look at the virtual machine history, pick a date. So um, if we say from March to August, and we say browse, we can look at the virtual machine history of everything that's been built. So we'll see here, we've got some edge gateways, what vSphere license version they're running on, what ESXi host name there is, how much RAM they're using, how long it's been there for, how long it's been used for. Remember, you get billed for the usage, not for the actual licenses. Finally, we can look at some cluster history, break that down, see what clusters we got, what vSANs we're using. Are we using deduplication? What options are we using within vSAN as well? And then finally on that last tab, we have support. So we're able to download support bundles, provide that information to VMware GSS for any errors that they see. You can delete old data from the usage meter, and we can also change our logging levels. The standard kind of support options that you would get from VMware within a standard appliance. So, that concludes our walkthrough of vCloud Usage Meter 3.6. Thanks for watching.